Aquaculture is the reproduction and growth of aquatic organisms in a controlled or semi-controlled environment. There are many species of fish, shellfish, crustaceans, and aquatic plants produced by aquaculturists around the globe. Scientists estimate that there are approximately 300 species currently being produced, and they're finding many more potential species each year. Hi, my name is David Klein, and I'm an aquaculture specialist with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System at Auburn University. This presentation will provide an overview of four common types of aquaculture production systems that are used by today's aquaculturists. The systems include ponds, cages, raceways, and recirculating systems. There are different ways to measure the intensity of production systems, but for today's presentation, we'll use the amount of human intervention. With an increase in system intensity, the amount and cost of input rises, as does the required management skill. Each system has its own set of advantages and drawbacks, so it's important to match the best type of system with your specific location and species. Whenever you place a large number of aquatic animals in a restricted environment, it's up to you to make sure that you provide the basic requirements for them to live and grow. These requirements may vary from species to species, but all culture systems must meet the basic requirements in order for the fish to thrive. Can you guess what they are? Did you guess? They include water, oxygen, food, and a way for the fish to get rid of waste. For fish, their waste goes directly back into their environment, and aquacultures must find a way to deal with this waste. Ponds are the most commonly employed and least intense aquaculture system. Ponds are enclosed of water that most commonly have two, three, or four sides, depending on the topography of the land where they're built. In production settings, the ponds are often laid out so that they can share levees. Sharing levees reduces the amount of dirt moving during the construction process, which helps reduce cost, and it also makes the most efficient use of the available land. In some countries, there are areas that have high concentrations of production ponds, even very close to urban centers. Water to fill the ponds can come from wells, rain, runoff, springs, streams, or other bodies of surface water. Well water is generally the most consistent and reliable, but can be expensive to move the water with pumps. In Alabama, most of the water is captured rainwater, but in Mississippi, most of the pond water comes from underground wells. In most ponds, the oxygen is supplied by microscopic plants called phytoplankton, or algae. It is these tiny plants that supply most of the available oxygen through a process called photosynthesis. The amount of oxygen available is closely tied to the density of algae. During the day, the plants remove carbon dioxide from the water and produce oxygen. But at night, when the sun goes down, the plants begin to respire, which consumes oxygen and releases the carbon dioxide back into the water. If you were to draw a graph of the daily oxygen levels, it might look something like this. During the sunlight hours, the oxygen level is rising. But at night, when the algae are respiring, the oxygen levels decrease. Some oxygen for the fish in pond production comes out of the air in a process called diffusion. In this process, the oxygen molecules move from a region of higher concentration in the air to a region of lower concentration in the water. Sometimes, especially in the summer and often at night, there's a shortage of available oxygen. If this happens, the farmer uses mechanical aerators to increase the oxygen levels. These aerators get the oxygen into the water by putting water in the air, like with these paddle wheels, or air into the water using diffusers or other types of aerators. Without enough oxygen, fish will get stressed and can even die in a short period of time. Food for the pond fish is generally provided by the farmer in the form of floating pellets. Fish food may contain plants like corn and soybeans, fish meal, and a variety of vitamins and minerals. 
the formula and form of the feed varies with the size and species of fish. Trucks with feed blowers may be used to help spread the feed across the pond's surface. Spreading the feed across the pond gives the fish better access to the feed and reduces competition. Ammonia is the primary waste that fish produce, and even relatively low concentrations in the water can be stressful. Ammonia comes from the fish waste as well as uneaten feed. In pond culture, much of the ammonia is taken up or assimilated by the phytoplankton. The remainder is broken down by bacteria into less toxic forms in a process called nitrification. Cage culture is the next level of intensity. The advantages of cage culture include the ability to easily stock, feed, treat, and harvest the fish. The disadvantages include increased vulnerability to predators and the rapid spread of disease should one occur. Cage culture generally involves taking all the fish you would normally allow to roam free in the pond and put them in one place. Cages can range in size from one cubic meter for a small cage to as large as 100 cubic meters. In freshwater, you can grow a variety of fish in cages, including tilapia, catfish, striped bass, and sometimes trout. Cages are generally constructed from either a soft material, like nylon net, or a hard material like extruded plastic or vinyl coated wire. Stocking rates in freshwater can vary from 5 to 12 fish per cubic foot and under ideal conditions it's possible to grow up to 10 pounds of fish per cubic foot of cage space. Sea cages that are used in the ocean are much larger and can measure up to 125,000 cubic meters. Uh, which is roughly 75 meters by 75 meters by 20 meters deep. They have to be very strong to protect the fish from predators and damage from the rough seas. The benefits of sea cages is that they can be moved around if necessary and expansion of the operation is relatively straightforward. The downside of sea cages is that the aquaculturists have little control over the environment including the weather, water quality, and potential for disease outbreaks. Oxygen for the fish in cages comes mostly from photosynthesis, but it can be supplemented by aeration. Cages are not typically aerated, but depend on the movement of water through the cage and through the mesh to bring in fresh oxygenated water. Because the fish are confined in the cages, there's little if any natural food available. Therefore, the feeds used in cage culture must be high quality and nutritionally complete. When cage fish feed vigorously, they may splash and throw feed out of the cage. Some cages have a ring of smaller mesh material around the top called a feed ring that will help keep the food in the cage until the fish can eat it. Waste created in fish cages generally falls through the bottom of the cage or is removed by the water circulating through the cage. The pond outside the cage still serves as the biofilter and the ammonia is taken up by algae and broken down by bacteria much the same way as it is in pond culture. Raceways are the next level of production technology. Raceways are rectangular structures built above or below ground where the water flows in one end and out the other. Raceways typically have a length to width ratio of five to one or more and may be constructed of cement, fiberglass, or even wood. Fish culture in raceways requires large quantities of high quality water, preferably supplied by gravity flow from artesian wells or water coming from a higher elevation. Raceways can be used for the production of both warm water fish such as tilapia or cool water species but it's most commonly associated with the production of trout. And there are many trout farms in Idaho where they have lots of high quality uh, fresh water flowing from the mountains. The quantity of fish that can be grown in a raceway is dependent on both the quality and the quantity of water available. Depending on the water chemistry, it is possible to grow between 30 and 100 pounds of trout per gallon per minute of flow. For example, if a raceway has 1,000 gallons per minute of flow available, it can support 30,000 to 100,000 pounds of production on an annual basis. 
oxygen in the raceways comes in with the fresh water and may be increased or maintained by letting the water fall from one raceway segment to another. The falling water causes splashing that assists in the diffusion of oxygen from the air. Like the fish in cages, fish in raceways do not have access to any natural foods, so they are totally dependent on the prepared diet for all of their nutritional needs. Feeds for these systems must be high quality and are typically more expensive than feeds for pond raised fish. The feed is often supplied automatically to the fish in the raceway several times per day by mechanical or demand feeders. Raceways are designed to be a single pass flow through system that sweep away fish waste and any unaken feed downstream and out of the fish culture unit. Some raceways have a solid settling area at the end of the raceway and large raceway operations often require settling ponds or other waste treatment facilities before the water can be released into the environment. Recirculating aquaculture systems, no matter how small or how large, are considered to be among the most intensive forms of aquaculture. The lure of these systems is that they can be located almost anywhere and do not require as much water as the other production systems. It is possible to grow up to one pound of fish per gallon of water in these systems, but they require significant energy, equipment, and managerial expertise, and all of these requirements add to the cost of the product. The systems contain a number of components that include the culture tank, a filter to remove solid waste, a biological filter to remove dissolved waste, like ammonia, oxygenation equipment, carbon dioxide removal, and a way to sterilize the water. Because of the heavy biological load on the system, recirculating systems require the continuous addition of oxygen. Depending on the level of intensity and complexity of the systems, air or pure oxygen may be used. Different devices ensure that oxygen is maintained at an adequate level. If power is lost in one of these systems, the fish can die very quickly from lack of oxygen, so a backup plan is essential. Fish and recirculating aquaculture systems require high quality feed that meets all of their nutritional requirements. Like the fish in cage culture and raceway culture, these fish do not have access to any natural foods. Waste removal is an integral component of a recirculating aquaculture system. There is usually a mechanical filter, like a screen filter, a drum filter, or a bead filter that removes solid wastes and a biological filter that removes the dissolved waste. Biofilters generally contain beads, balls, or other media that have large surface area to volume ratios where bacteria can grow. These bacteria help break down the ammonia into less toxic nitrate through the nitrification cycle. Okay, let's quickly review the technologies we've seen. Ponds are the most commonly used production system and rely heavily on natural processes to remove waste and provide oxygen. Good catfish farmers can produce six to eight thousand pounds of fish per acre or even more. Cages can be used in existing bodies of fresh or salt water to confine and grow fish in large numbers. Waste is processed by the larger body of water and it is critical to maintain water movement and circulation throughout the cage. Confinement has its advantages but the high densities of fish increase the risk of disease or other problems. In these systems, it's possible to grow 5 to 10 pounds of fish per cubic foot of cage space. Raceways require large volumes of water to maintain water quality, and there are relatively few locations where this type of resource is still available. The amount of fish that can be grown is directly correlated to the quantity and the quality of water. It is possible to grow up to 30 to 100 pounds of fish for each gallon per minute of flow. Recirculating aquaculture systems are the most intense form of aquaculture and rely heavily on external power and mechanical processes to maintain the water quality. It's possible to maintain loads as high as one pound of fish per gallon of water with continual filtering and the addition of oxygen. These systems offer the highest potential reward but also the greatest risk of failure. In addition to the four traditional culture systems that we have looked at, scientists are developing new integrated systems that incorporate the best characteristics of each technology. 
Examples include in-pond raceways, floating raceways, and partitioned aquaculture systems. But that's a story for another day. I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and are inspired to learn more about these technologies. If you'd like more detailed information, please have a look at the included supplemental readings. Or if you're viewing this online, please visit our website at www.alearn.info. Good luck and have a great day.